Alec, good to be back at Star GB. Uh, we're looking today at the SR32 J3. Now, this is a successor to the J2, so it's going to be of interest to um, companies that have probably got a 32mm machine already or are, in fact, in the market for a new one. Tell us what's different. For sure. Uh, the specification has increased ever so slightly on this model, uh, but the main difference is really on the back tool post. So we've changed the arrangement there, so it's a lot more rigid, but it also includes much um, superior swarf clearance on the, on the back side. So what's changed then? How has it changed? Uh, in layman's terms, the, the moving slide has gone from the back of the casting to the front of the casting, but we've also changed the guiding around it as well, just to give us a lot more room to get the swarf away. Could that have been a problem before then, the fact? I mean, these machines are notorious for metal removal, aren't they? So the more metal you're removing, certainly with more power and more speed, for sure. there is that possibility. What we've tried to do is, obviously, we don't want swarf building up around that casting, in, getting into the gearbox and things like that. So this machine gives us much, much better swarf clearance and reduces any risk that we you know, could have a problem. So that unmanned run became, becomes even more of a possibility, yeah. doesn't it? It's a more efficient machine, basically. What about your second spindle? Some changes there with the, with the coolant? Like I say, the, the specification has increased. We're now including a uh, sub-flush as standard on this model as well. Uh, there's a couple of other subtle changes in terms of the ergonomics, lubricators, oil top-ups are all at the front of the machine to make it a little bit easier for our customers. Um, the changeover procedure as well is a little bit easier. We included some extra jigs and fixtures in the changeover procedure, which we, which we didn't have before, so that will speed that process up as well. The changeover of what? Guy bush, non guy bush. Okay, so that will become a bit quicker. A less, little bit easier. Yeah. Not saying it was cumbersome, but a little bit easier. For sure. Which means going from uh, from those that, that that sort of almost fixed head scenario to sliding head yeah. is is going to become something that yeah. will be attractive to people doing varieties. Yeah. We've just made it a little bit easier to get it sorted. Okay, um, Alec, who is interested in these SR32s these days? Forget the new enhancements and the succession on the model. Where do, where do they fit in terms of the fact that they're even more flexible now? They're much much faster than they used to be, much more powerful? It's a great question, and to be honest, the 32 size machine has always been our most popular model in the range. You know, in Germany, it's, a, it's, it's the 20R4. In America, it's the SB20. But that must it, be something to do with our industry. It's just, it, it is just weird. I think, I think what our customer base is looking for is versatility. And for sure, okay, you might not be able to machine the micro parts on this machine that well, but everything up from you know, three millimeters above in terms of bar capacity, you know, this machine, you know, gives you that uh, capability. And that flexibility then, Alec, that, that comes a lot from the amount of tools uh, stations that you have on this machine, doesn't it? Yeah, for sure, you know, variety of fixed driven tool spindles, but we can get up to, you know, 39 tools in this machine. And what about the B-axis? Is, is that an option on here too? Not on this model. On the SR38, obviously the bigger brother to this machine, we've got the programmable B-axis. And it's just a coincidental that you've got a new bar, bar feed on here from FMB, have you? We Some have. enhancements there. Tell yeah. us about that. That's the, the Turbo RS. So the, the, the main difference on that bar feeder is that uh, it combines two different types of technology. We've had the LSK bar feeder for you know, five or six years now and the Turbo bar feeder for a long while. But basically, instead of having a lathe steady on the back of the spindle and a bar feeder steady, we have a lathe steady and a long tube that, that moves with the headstock. So basically that transition area between the two steadies is moved back down the bar feeder where there's a lot more support. So it's much better in terms of um, supporting the material closer to the main collet. And what's the risk of not being able to support the material in the way that you're talking about there? Well, the, 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 the problem is when you've got the bar stock and, and the main pusher, the steadies open and close as that main pusher moves forward. So there's always a point where one steady is open, one steady is closed. Okay. So you yeah. can get um, some vibration. But with this system, uh, you've only got one steady and an awful long tube where you've got much, much better support on the bar feed side.